Hi, in this video I want to provide a deep dive into LLM chains. After this video, you will not only know how to create custom chains, but also understand all of the logic and inner workings of the way we create custom chains in LangChain. You should be familiar with the basics of LLM chains and some object-oriented programming to be able to follow along. You will find the link to the code in the description. As you can see, I'm here in VS Code and I'm currently in the custom LangChain iPython notebook. There you will find the code and be able to follow along. To be able to work with OpenAI models, you have to import the OpenAI API key. I've stored mine in the .n file. And then after doing this, we can load the API key as environment variable. And then let's go to the LLM chain. The LLM chain needs two inputs. The first one is the prompt. You can use a prompt template. And here you can define your own template. I uh, tell in my template, tell us a joke about a specific topic. And the topic is here inside curly braces, which means that it is an input variable for the prompt template. For the LLM, we use chat OpenAI. You can use any other model uh, from LangChain. They all share the same interface and are compatible here with the LLM chain. After instantiating the chain, we can use the run method and pass in two arguments here. The first one is the input variable for the uh, template. And the second one is an optional input and that's the callbacks. Callbacks allow you to hook into various stages of the LLM application. And that's useful, for example, for monitoring, logging, and some other tasks. And we can just run the code and see this LLM chain now produces some output. Why did the bicycle go to therapy? Because it had Shanxiety. Okay, so that works. It's pretty easy to use. But what do we want to do if you want some custom chain? To create a custom chain, we have to create a custom class which inherits from chain. And chain is a base class which comes from length chain, chains, and base. So this base class implements some abstract methods. So it forces us to implement these methods ourselves. The first one is input keys. These are the keys for the chain input, then output keys, which are the keys for the chain output. And then here on the bottom, the most important method the underscore call method. And this method contains all of our chain execution logic. Okay, let's go to the custom chain here. And as you can see, uh, we inherit from the chain. I call my chain Wikipedia article chain. So we create a Wikipedia article based on some random topic we pass in as input. So first we pass in here a prompt and also an LLM. These are the same arguments as here uh, when we instantiate it. So here we've got a prompt and here we've got the LLM. And we just say we uh, want a prompt that is a prompt based template. And the base prompt template uh, means that we can use any uh, template which inherits from this base prompt template. The same is true for the base language model. So our LLM will be able to handle all uh, language models here. We also provide a property output key, which is a string, and we uh, call it article here. After that, we have a class called config. And this is a pydentic class, which allows to um, change the behavior of this class. And with extra and arbitrary types allowed, we say that when we say extra for bit, that we won't allow to add other attributes to this uh, Wikipedia article class after, after instantiating it. And arbitrary types allowed means that the properties cannot only contain integers or strings, but also um, models or classes like uh, this base language model or this base prompt template. Okay, we then define the input keys and output keys. To implement this was forced by us by the abstract method of the chain class. And we use the property decorator for input and output keys to make this function just look like a property. So we can just access this function here with a dot and then uh, dot input keys. So we don't have to use uh, braces here to actually get the values we want to retrieve here. Okay, now we have to implement the actual logic of the LLM with the underscore call method. This was also forced on us by the abstract method of the chain class. And we have to pass in arguments, the inputs, which is a dictionary, and also a run manager, which is an optional argument. We can pass in uh, a callback manager for this um, LLM, which is responsible for hooking in into the LLM and printing and logging stuff if we want that. So first, we're gonna create a new prompt template. And we do this by calling the format prompt method, 
we pass in all of our inputs here. As you can see, this is a dictionary. So we extract all of the values here by just destructuring it. We then use the generate prompt method from the LLM to actually make a request to OpenAI. We can pass in a run manager if you want to. This will call the get child method. Otherwise it will be none. So we don't have to use this callback manager. And if we have one, we want to hook into the on text method and just log generated Wikipedia article on given topic on standard output. At the end, we're gonna return a dictionary here. The key of the dictionary is the output key of the class and the value is the generated text by the LLM. Okay, we can also use an a call method, but we don't have to implement it. The underscore call method is forced on us, but the a call is not. At the end, we're just gonna return another property, which is the chain type. And we say the chain type is Wikipedia article chain. Okay, after defining the chain, we ca can now create a prompt template with a single argument here or with a single variable with a topic and then pass in the prompt. And as LLM, we're gonna use chat OpenAI. Then we run our chain with the run method. We pass in quantum physics here. And as callbacks, we pass in the standard out callback handler. So let's do that. Let's first instantiate it and then actually run it. Okay, as you can see, the code worked. And as we can see here, the type of the output is a string. So we uh, return a string from this run method. And as you can see, this works. So this is how you create a custom chain. Okay, I could in theory end the video now, but my first question when I wrote my first custom LLM chain was, what the hell is actually going on here? Because we run a single run method with a single string argument and the optional callback argument. But when we take a look at the method we defined here, it takes as input a dictionary and a run manager, but not callbacks and not a single string. So why does this actually work? To find this out, we have to inspect the run method. As you can see, the run method is defined in the chain class. If we scroll up here, we can see this is the, this is the chain class and this actually is not overridden. So this will always be the same. So what's happening here is if we take a look here, we can see that if we provide uh, arcs and not quarks, it will use the first argument here. So this is what we do. We provide in a single argument, not a keyword argument. So we would normally do this. And if we provide quarks, it would do this. So, but what's actually going on here? This function returns a self and here we've got brackets. So we know this is an instance of the Wikipedia article class and this is called like a function. So if this happens, we know that this Wikipedia class has implemented an underscore underscore call method or dunder call method. So we have to search here for an underscore underscore and then call to find it. Let's do it like this with def. So we know this is the actual function. And yeah, that's implemented. So we know this run method calls actually this. So let's crawl a little bit down here. And first we've got our inputs, which are run through the prepare inputs method. And then very important here, the callback manager, which has a class method called configure. And this will configure the callbacks and some other tags, metadata and so on, and create a callback manager. And the callback manager then uses the on chain start method and dumps in the object itself. So this function here actually creates a JSON object. And then we pass this to the on chain start method to just log it. And so the run manager is actually just a configured callback manager. So this is the link between run manager and callback manager. Okay, now let's scroll a little bit down. As we can see, we've got a try and accept statement. And here's the most interesting part. We can see that actually now the underscore call method is called here. So we call first time the run method, which calls the dunder method call. And this calls the underscore call method. So we've got this chain of functionality. And this is actually the magic happens now. We can see this method is called, we pass in the inputs and we pass in the run manager. This will now be passed to the self 
uh, prep outputs functionality. So this is a method also of the chain class and create the final output dictionary. So this will actually create a dictionary. As we can see here, it's annotated like this. So with this kind of information, we can now go back to the run method. And as you can see here, we've got our output keys. So this is a dictionary. This is returned from the Dunder call method. And we extract from this dictionary this key now. So we've got our output key. And instead of returning a dictionary from the run method, we actually now return just a single string. And this is how it works. So we can also prove it if we take a look at this. So instead of using the run method here, we can just treat our chain like a callable and pass in the arguments directly. This will under the hood now call the Dunder method call. And instead of returning a string, this will return just a dictionary. So that's the difference here. This method, this run method is a convenience method, which calls under the hood the underscore underscore call method. And this underscore underscore call method then calls our user defined underscore call method. I know that was not easy, but I hope I helped you to get a deeper understanding of LLM chains and the inner workings of LangChain. If you liked this video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and give the video a thumb up. Thank you very much. Bye bye.